Welcome back to Italian Football TV. We got you with the latest transfer news. We got Hakan Chahanolu. I still got to learn his name because he stayed in the uh, Serie A. Locatelli, possibly going to Juventus, which is a big move. And then some Italy team talk because there's new players that might start in our match against Austria on Saturday. Let's start off with the big news, oh Mike. One side of Milan to another, as he intertweeted with their picture of the Navillo place in Milan, which is beautiful. I was just there. I miss it so much. So Inter have signed. Him? No, I didn't see him. <laughs> Inter has signed Milan's Hakan Chalonolu on a free transfer, three-year contract, four and a half million euros for the first year, five million euros for the second and for the third mm. year. They signed because Ericsson is unclear at the moment if and when. He will be able to return. And without so much money, there was no transfer fee. Inter, we obviously know that they're in a struggling moment where they need to sell players. So they needed a replacement who could come in without a transfer fee. Now, after Milan lost Donnarumma, who just took his medical for PSG, they lose another starter on a free transfer. Mike, what are your thoughts uh, on his move to Inter? My man betrayed Milan just for uh, s some extra chump change. But to be honest with you, Hakan, to me, he was never a great player. He's shown like flashes of being a great player, but he never really cemented himself that. I'm just waiting to see what Inzaghi could really do with Hakan. We know he provided a lot of uh, scoring uh, chances and assists and stuff like that, but he was, you know, he's very hot and cold. I'm not a big fan of Hakan. I've never been. I okay. always thought that he's inconsistent. I always thought that he was overrated for what people said he's just not my type of player but at the same time Inter's in a really tough position and I think this is actually a good signing for them having said that I'm not crazy about the player it's still a good signing for Inter the situation with Ericsson is really rough he's not as good as Ericsson but where are you going to find a player where you don't have much money to spend who knows the Serie A who knows a system who could fit into your your coach's system like that like him it's very hard and for a little amount of money. I don't think that it's as crazy as, as considering the costs. I think that this is a good signing for Inter. He's not Ericsson. He's not a top, top player, but he's still pretty good, especially for no transfer fee. Yeah, They're in a tough him. moment and a tough position. I feel like they could have found someone better though. Who? Whatever. I don't know. I'm not the director. They're not paying me yeah, the but big if you bucks say to find out. But if you say that they're going to find somebody, you got to give a real, realistic Dude, if I was name. a director, I, I'd find multiple names. I'll give you a day. I'll give you one day. Mike has I'll, one day wait, to find the player. I have one day to find it, and I get zero salary what these directors are supposed yeah, to be getting. But you're criticizing it, so you got to back it up. There are consequences we'll, for your we'll, actions, we'll Michael. We'll focus on the salary like Hakan is over here. Hakimi uh, <laughs> is set to leave Inter. We know that already. PSG are ready to make an offer of 75 million to Inter. Inter, we know, needs 100 million to sell all their players. So this gets them really close. Uh, they're saying that PSG are in constant contact with his agent, according to Sky Sport Italia. Mike. I mean, we knew for the past few weeks Hakim was leaving. I I, I kind of sold it on myself. It sucks to see him go. You know, he's great. I didn't know anything about him when he came. But, you know, now that he's leaving, he's incredible, world class. And it's going to be very hard to uh, get someone like him. But, dude, if they're offering that much money. Crazy. He's probably. 75 he's, million. He's definitely going to break the record for the most expensive uh, fullback slash wingback ever. That's first of all. And Inter need the money. So. I love Hakimi. I mean, he is absolutely amazing. Amazing. He's yeah. the best right back slash right wing back in the world, whatever you want to call him. He's the best in the world. But 75 million for him is wild. And I think that, listen, it is what it, the situation is what it is. And this is like the best outcome for Inter possible. Yeah, yeah. Better than selling Lukaku, better than selling a couple other players. Is I know it's very hard to find fullbacks. Kind of reminds me of the Cancelo situation. But 75 million is crazy. They're getting the best market value. I didn't think that they would get that much, especially in this market. So good job by them. Hopefully they could find a replacement. Uh, by the way, guys, you absolutely blew the merch out of the water. The goats. Uh, our biggest numbers ever. Ever. We love you. We always tell you guys that this stuff goes quick. So we appreciate everyone who helped sell that out and go crazy. Also, guys, make sure you're always subscribed and liking all of the videos if you love this content. We are back. Let's talk about Locatelli, Baby. the man that's blowing it away at the Euros right now. Juve are going to present an offer to Sassuolo for Locatelli by Thursday. The offer will be 30 million euros plus Dragushin as their first offer, but they are willing to add more players into this deal. This news coming from Romeo Agresti, who is basically as legitimate as it can get for news. Mike, thoughts? I mean, 
I was Locatelli's boy from the start. I, I watch Aswolo La. I, how many times have I been saying you on said the you podcast? Hated no, no. How many times have I said on the podcast, like, yo, he, he evolved, he's good, he's good. And I said, I believe in the last transfer video, if he goes to a team like Juve with better players, he can really evolve. And I feel like we've seen a dose of that at that Zuri. You know, those talents around him that that are obviously, you know, better than the Sassuolo players overall. Dude, he like exploded. I feel like he has no roof at his potential. I'm really happy for him. He left Milan, he went to Sassuolo. A lot of people counted him out, but dude, he's proven it at a young age and he, he's showing that he can go to one of the best teams in Italy. Everyone knows I haven't been crazy about Locatelli. Yeah. Uh, I've never been a, a big fan of him. I mean, I knew obviously that he was better than the Juve midfielders currently. I just didn't think he was that top, top player. And listen, Every once in a while, when you're wrong, you got to put your hands up and say, I was wrong. What Locatelli is doing at the Euros is absolutely incredible. I didn't think he had this in him. And if it continues on this path, I mean, the kid is going to be world class. It's fine to admit when you're wrong sometimes. That's it. I thought that he wasn't going to be the world class midfielder, but he's really proving himself good. to be that. Uh, both from a technical and a character side. They're, the both are very important and, and they're different. Uh, but having said all of that, I don't think he's going to be this cheap. I don't think you're getting him for $30 million plus Drago Sheen. No way. If they did get that, that's a crazy steal. But I think it's going to be either a lot more money or like maybe $40 million, or if they can include some players. But that would be a great deal if they could get him for only $30 million. Um, Great news. Well, kind of great news. We're going to have fans back in the Serie A stadiums. 25% by August 2020, uh, August 22nd. Sorry, not, not 2020, 2021 we're in. We finally have that confirmed. For me, it needs to be way more. It should be at least 50%. They're saying that they're going to gradually increase it and see. Yeah. I mean, I just came back from Italy. Everything is basically opened in most regions. They're in Zona Bianca. People have the vaccine. Young kids have the vaccine. I think open it up. Play put, put people No, put fi at least 50%. Know. If we could do it over here in America, of course we want to respect all the protocols, but I think that by August, we should definitely have at least 50% and get to 100% as soon as possible. So I think that we have to eventually get back to this. No, for this sure. Show. It's better sooner than, rather than later, obviously, but we want to respect all the rules first and foremost. But I'm happy just to, you know, this whole season we didn't see any Serie A fans, so now we're going to start seeing something. So I think we're going to get there pretty soon. Even at the Euros, we see like, Hungary has 60,000. Oh, Wembley just got moved to 60,000. We need we need everything back. Yeah. Guys, Italy news. Let's talk. Saturday, we're playing against Austria. We will be live, of course, on our channel. Oh, yeah. Some team news real quick. Corriere del Sport says that Verratti is likely to start over Locatelli. Chiellini and Florenzi both injured, but Chiellini started running again, but he's still training aside from the rest of the team, just as Florenzi. It will be taken day by day if both will be able to play. Serie A, by the way, has just been killing it in the Euros. Most Euro 2020 MVP awards have been given to Serie A players with 10 know. All included. And Italy are the first team to not concede a single goal in any Euro group stage while also maintaining a perfect record. Unbelievable. I'm so excited. I'm ready to see Italy play. I'll give my opinion a little bit and then you could chime in. I know everybody's heard your opinions. They've heard, I've heard some of Antonio's crazy opinions. As I'd, usual, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, I'm obsessed with Verratti. I think Locatelli's done amazing. Either way, I'm happy. Between Verratti and Locatelli, we are not going to go wrong. They're two amazing midfielders. See who's most informed. See who's training the best and choose between them. I was in Italy. I was watching this game. I watched the match against Switzerland in Florence. Hundreds of people around me. It was absolutely incredible. Lost our mind. Uh, I was jumping on top of other Italian men. We were high-fiving. <laughs> I lost my bracelet. I jumped up in there and fist pumped and it went flying. Whoa. So I had to go find it later on. Uh, and it was a man was just standing on top of it, but I, I caught it. Yeah, wow. I, I saw him there. Uh, just watching Italy in, in Italy was just different. The other thing that I would say is like, I'm really happy with our team. They've done better than I could have expected. I expected three wins. I didn't expect the wins to come as they have. But one thing I want to say, I see people getting mad about all the pundits and people around and comments saying that Italy, why are people saying that Italy haven't played top teams? Uh, people are salty. You're, you're salty for saying that. It's a truth at the end of the day. And we can't be so naive to, to be, oh my God, stop criticizing Italy. Listen, what we've played the teams that are in front of us and we did what we could do. I'm not taking anything away from the team, but they are right that we haven't played a top team yet. Turkey was supposed to be the team that, that performed. Everybody hyped up Turkey, right? Including me. They didn't do anything. They were not a test. None of these teams that we played were tests. In the past, Italy has done poor against smaller teams, so it, it's still doing good. But we need to see how this team does when the going gets tough. So it's fair. Do I agree with Vieta when he says lack of intensity? Absolutely not. That guy did not watch games. But I do agree with the others that say, listen, 
We'll see the real Italy when we play the top teams. And we're going in with the best momentum, but we need to keep that energy against the big guys. Marco, also, I don't know if you saw the podcast, but your dad called Vieira an idiot and Anto called him a cucumber. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Me neither, but it was hilarious. I thought cool as a cucumber. That's a compliment. No, he didn't say cool. He just called yeah, him a cucumber. I think, I think Antonio doesn't even know the real reference. <laughs> Maybe. Guys, be ready. Saturday, we're going live. Subscribe, go, follow, For like. Tazuri. Let us know who you want us to have on our stream. We're looking for that. Saturday, you better be here. I'm back. We're going to have a packed house over here. You ready? Let's go. Let's Forza go. Italia. Austria, we got to beat Austria. I'm sorry, but we gotta beat Austria. They're not bad. The real they're, they're not a bad side, but yeah, obviously we gotta, beat, Austria. We gotta yeah. beat everybody, yeah, but we sure. gotta beat Austria. Yeah. Guys, we'll see you soon. Ciao, Ciao guys.